Now, before we get started, today's video is sponsored by DragQueenMerch.com, and we are excited to also premiere and announce an exclusive new Katya merch item. So check that out. And by using discount code Katya, you can get 20% off the item, but not only the item, also site-wide. So make sure to check the uh, description box below for all of that info. So your fans have said it time after time. So I have to know, do you believe that you were robbed? Oh my God. I, you know what? I think this is like, this is karmic uh, revenge, universal revenge, because I, back in my former life, I was a, a very prolific um, thief. And, um, and I think that this is, this is some of the universe's like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna throw it back to you, bitch. And we're gonna have every single stranger that you meet for the next 25 fucking years say that you were robbed. Even though you know it's not true and they know it's not true and everybody knows it's not true. We're all just gonna have this bizarre lie we tell ourselves. <laughs> First of all, nobody gets robbed on that show. You either don't receive a present, which is not robbed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you were robbed. Oh, I had the hundred thousand, someone took away from me. Like, no, <laughs> like it's not, a, we have to figure out a better thing to say or like, or you should have won is another, that's better. Yes. Then that's just like, oh, thank you. Um, but robbed, I was like, oh, that's so dumb. Um, there is no, like, <laughs> it's just weird. Cause it, it, I obviously appreciate the sentiment. Cause that means I, I all, my brain is just programmed to interpret that. I just literally translate it to, translate it to I like you, which is great. Um, but yeah, like, I'm like, oh, okay. I hope that in your life, there's, this is the only area of delusion that you're currently working with. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, what else are you delusional about? Ah! You know? Do you think Mike Pence is a good person too? Like, I don't know. It's crazy. <laughs> but I get it. I mean, I get it. But I just, it's, it is like, it is annoying. But I'd never say, stop telling me I was robbed, guys. Because yeah. you can't, you can't, you can't that. do that. No, 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 no. So, speaking of your fans, mm -hmm. you've previously spoken about that you don't, highly enjoy meet and greets because there's always a queue and there people always have yeah. to wait. Well, I don't, yeah, the thing I don't like, it's not that I don't like them. I don't, the, what has bothered me in the past about the setup is like, just, I'm uncomfortable, like a drag con. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, the, the idea of people having to wait in line is just like so, that sucks, you know, because it's just like line con. Um, uh, you know, and it's, it, because, listen, <laughs> The absurdity of, of complaining about meet and greets is like, oh, I have to sit there while like hundreds of people wait in line to queue up to tell me how amazing I am <laughs> and give me gifts and buy my, it's like, come on, it's ridiculous. Um, but, uh, you know, I just, yeah, so that, that's just the thing. I mean, um, uh, the... It is a little bit, it, it is doing a separate show. Correct. Yeah, it's because in, you know, I, I kind of took it seriously. I think Jujubee talked to me about it before I went on the road after season seven. She was like, kind of gave me a little uh, rundown of like, you know, you gotta, you gotta be this and this and, and the, the, the importance of being respectful and, um, and personable was like, she uh, really stressed that. And I think I benefited from that advice a lot. Um, because it was, it's counterintuitive also for a drag queen, especially of like my generation, we were like, we're not supposed to be like Mr. Rogers, you know, but that's, um, that's really what makes, you know, a difference. And I mean, I'm not, I'm not a mean person anyway, so it's fine. But like, uh, yeah, it, 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 but it's a whole show. Like I found that I can't do two meet and greets in the same day. Like it, I've done it in a, it just doesn't work. It's crazy. You think yeah. it's like, oh, it gives a fuck. Like how? How is that gonna like tire you out? Like how is it that it exhausts the hell out it of you? It is, and it's you know it's like it's not something anybody really understands or it doesn't make any sense, but it really is, and it's it's weird, yeah. yeah. But um, I, I yeah I, I when did this start? Like in terms of because like J Lo does it, Britney yeah. Spears like the really Britney. top acts, yeah, 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 or Avril Lavigne famously, yeah, like, like straight know. away, yeah, yeah. Which I love. I mean, I totally get it. I like people not wanting to be touched is like so normal yeah by strangers or anybody and i was like because i'm a little bit you know no boundaries touchy-feely and like i'll go up to i'll immediately go up i let people know like it's time to hug me <laughs> and um and one guy was like oh i don't do hugging i was like all right 
all right, you better declare those boundaries right away in like unambiguous language. Like, good job. <laughs> <laughs> That's so interesting. Now, after All Stars 2, uh -huh. your and Trixie show ends up getting turned to the Trixie and Katya show on Vice. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then you end up doing that. Yeah. Um, shortly after that, in January of 2018, you announced to the world that you were taking a break from drag uh -huh. and media, and you said in French, Oh, God. Um, oh. I'm not dying. I want to live. I'm a drug addict, but I'm sober. Today and yesterday and before. But I need to take a vacation because I want to survive like Gloria Gaynor. <laughs> God. Health is the most important thing for me. I believe you'll understand. We'll see you, and I wish you a good day. Bye-bye. You then deleted your account. Oh, God, yeah. Then you returned, and you said, Hi, my name's not Katya. Wait, I, okay, go ahead, sorry. Okay. I'm Brian, a recovering drug addict and a workaholic. I need to take some personal time for my mental health to heal and recover. Mm. So, how are you today? How do you feel after all of that? Well, I'm not crazy. Well, can't ever say a crazy person says they're not crazy. Um, uh, yeah, that, oh, oh gosh, that was so wild. Um, and I, it was like, so weird it was like a lot of different things i had never because i had been doing drugs like getting sober for like since i think 2008 was when i started to go to like 12-step programs and stuff and um so i've kind of been at it for a while and familiar with the with the um with the trajectory of like okay you you know with relapse mm -hmm. and like coming back and all that stuff and like going too hard and what happens and um and i had never gone crazy like i uh I was, I got psychotic a bunch, like real bad, like running through downtown, but naked, screaming at people. Wow. Yeah, like I, I remember I got into a naked, got into a car and was like, Roxy, are you here? I remember saying like Roxy Andrews was in the car <laughs> and like, you know, and bad, like crazy shit, crazy shit. And I'm very lucky that I didn't get shot by the police, yes. especially because I got cuffed by the police one time. And, um, and I, and it was wild. I had never experienced that. I had been like prior to that, I had been five, like f four days, no sleep without on drugs. And I, you just get crazy. You, you don't get crazy. You just get exhausted and you, you know, fall asleep standing up or you, you'll see like little shadow people, but that's really, that was the extent of it. And then I started like smoking a lot of weed too. And this California weed is no joke. It's no joke. It is crazy, is crazy strong in like the sativa. And so all the, the weed and, the, and then obviously meth and then even, and then workout pills. <laughs> there was these, what is workout pills? Listen, there was so, there was a place right down the street actually. I went in to get um, pre-workout or, or, or muscle milk, whatever. The yeah. Fuck. And this guy was like, you know what? I have some, I have some other stuff that you might enjoy. And I was like, okay. And it gave me this like bottle that looked like he had printed out the label. And there was these red pills and they were basically Fen Fen. Do you remember, do you know, how old are you? 28. Okay, well back in the day, like there was a whole big diet pill fiasco. Okay. Fen Fen, ephedrine. And like, um, it, they're basically speed. It's straight up speed, diet, you know, it, it's taking speed. These are 12 hour pills, pre-workout. 12 hours. So I took them because it, it was like basically doing meth without the euphoria. So I was like, I'm not high. I'm just like rolling, you know what I mean? So like, and uh, so I did that for two weeks. Slept about three to four hours a night. Oh my God. I was God. like cranking it at the gym and then, and then get, you know, running out of the gym, like, brrr, like the, like the fucking um, uh, road runner. And then smoking weed, thinking I was magical thinking. And then it just, it was, it just went you just go nuts and went completely nuts and then it happened a bunch and yeah, it was wild, wild, awful, awful. Yeah, really awful. What led you to your turnaround? I had to go to rehab. Yeah? Yeah, I had to go to rehab. Was that a decision on your own or? Not really. Uh, <laughs> I, had, I, had, I went back to my parents' house and then I was still, I was twisted up. Um, it was, uh, I, that's when I tried to fuck a ghost. Yeah. I tried to fuck a ghost. I, okay, so this is, this is like the weird thing about it because it doesn't really matter. Um, I, I don't believe in ghosts, but I believe people who say they saw them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that doesn't prove the existence of a ghost. Yeah. I believe you saw what you saw. Exactly. You know, so I definitely saw a fucking ghost and then I tried to fuck it, but then it didn't fuck me back.
<laughs> but yeah, I went to rehab because I was like, uh, I was at my parents' house and it was things were not getting better. And I think, um, and I was like, oh fuck. Oh, I, and this is the, another scary thing about speed and other dr- you know, drugs. Like I, uh, I did a thing which I later learned is like commonly called future tripping. Okay. Which when I, I they took me to the hospital and uh, I couldn't talk. Like I couldn't say anything. It was so weird. And I thought it was, I thought it was like six months in the future. And I thought I was convinced that everybody had disowned me and like had in that my, I was with my parents and I, they were the only people who would talk to me. And, and I was convinced that even then it was like, that's crazy. It, it was so scary. And I was like, I just, that's what I thought was happening. And, um, I remember thinking also Erica Badu somehow had dragged me online. It was like, it was just a lot of weird, crazy shit. Yeah. You, so you end up in rehab huh. and then when did you decide to make the comeback? Like when did you know in your head, like, Hey, like I'm okay right now. I'm going to get back into the drag. That I'm- was, that never happened. I mean, I was, I came back too quick and then, um, I was crazy for like a while, like not like, not on drugs, but like, but still like Looney yeah. Tunes, which I then never experienced that before because usually like I you get, I would get sober and then you, there's a period of, um, of like lethargy or like intense calm down or whatever, or, you know, trying to recover from, especially if it's uppers and you get back to yourself quite quickly, or at least I did this time was not that I was like fully fucking nut balls for months and like started the podcast way too quickly. I mean, I was insane. Probably should have still been hospitalized and, um, you know, just like wild and crazy. Um, I remember I got, a million tattoos. I didn't feel any of them. It was just so like, you know, yeah. And then so I, I everybody was telling me this. You get to get rest, rest, yeah. rest. And I was like, nope, you know. And uh, so I just went back too early. And then, um, but I don't. I think I did. I didn't do gigs for a while, which was good. It was just so weird. But people, you know, people were so supportive, which is like I think probably too support. You know. Yeah too supportive but it's good you need that support and i think yeah well you, it's nice to have it I yeah mean, exactly you know it also would have been nice you know like who knows like it could have um because i was thinking i would just like stop doing drag and you know go work at ups or something yeah you know. be a delivery boy yeah <laughs> where are you where are you now in your journey i'm at a place now where i i don't th- like i don't really have a i've never really had a plan well that's not true i i don't really think about I mean, I think about two weeks in advance in my professional life, that's about it. And then, um, I don't know, just like take it each day as it comes. And like, um, it's, cause I, I tell you after like going like Looney Tunes, everything is different. Like it's, and I remember, I feel like that now, I don't feel like the same person at all. And I, and I like, I'll watch sometimes videos or clips of myself back um, from whenever, uh, because I, I used to go on Instagram Live all the time and do like stupid Periscope stuff, and I'm like, oh my god, what? Who is that person? And it's just like crazy. I don't know. Um, but yeah, now I mean, things are like I feel chill. That's I'm good. able to access a, like a. I'm able to actually be chill. I don't think I was able to do that before. Um, it's nice. <laughs> nice to it's be chill. chill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's cool. So after. All of that happened. Um, there was a little bit of a controversy in the past few months between Willem and Trixie discussing when Trixie mentioned uh, you were like a big part of the documentary and the relapse was a big oh, part there. Oh, yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. There was like fans, you know, going after different oh, people. Oh, right. Because, yes. she, oh, so I, I think it was Willem, did she kind of uh, accuse Trixie of being exploitative? Or was that not it? No. Yes. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. I mean, it was like the, it happened and like they got me, like I, they got my approval and everything. I saw the thing and I, I did not like it, but I mean, it's the truth. Yeah. You know, and it's a documentary. Mm-hmm. Um, I, uh, I thought it was really, I mean, the thing, I, I was so tough to watch. It was so awful. Um, and, uh, but the thing about it was I liked that I like that the documentary was so gray. Like this is a this is a performer who is literally a pink p- 
pussy Barbie fucking like Dolly Parton confection. And it was so gray. A drag queen documentary being gray. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it was almost drab. Like it was sad. You know what I mean? It was like, yeah. and it was like, it was wild that that in that sense, it's like very, it's very, uh, it kind of catches you off guard. But, um, oh, come on. I mean, I feel like Will I'm accusing people, uh, accusing people of being exploitative is hysterical because she's, I mean, you know, I don't know. Like she's the person who would exploit her own tragedy, I, I guess. Maybe that's just unfair to say, but um, it, it, she does, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think that there's any base to that. And plus, yeah, yeah. Trixie is so, like, so, um, has no ulterior motives. Like she's so upfront, she's so like, um, there's no hiding, there's no like subtext. Mm -hmm. There's no like, um, you know, there's no games or anything like that bullshit. You got a problem with her, you can tell her, right? You can ask her about it point blank, no mincing words, and she'll tell you exactly the truth. Like, it, and so it's like, it's not a big deal. Yeah. So speaking of something similar to a Barbie, you said Trixie is kind of like a, a pink Barbie. Uh -huh. You got your own pop figurine. Oh my God, I love that. How I love did that, that feel? I feel great. And I and I sign a lot of them all that at like at the shows nowadays. I love it. It looks so cute, and I feel like, um, yeah, I just love that. <laughs> it's just great. I love it. I don't need to, any more dolls, but um, yeah, I love signing that thing. It's so cute. It's gonna be, you know, hopefully, you know, or if I live to sixty or seventy or eighty or whatever, I was like, ooh, you know, it's great. It's so cute. Now, another big thing that's happened for you in the past year, um, you were in Netflix's uh, Tale of the City. Oh, yeah. How did that come to be and how did that feel to see yourself on uh, the Netflix? That was awful. Um, not, I'll tell you why. Um, it was, that was New York DragCon uh, weekend and I, I had to get up at three in the morning to go catch a, to go into the city to catch a shuttle, a bus, a shuttle bus at five in the morning or something, and then go to set. It was the longest fucking day. Everybody's so nice, by the way. And Laura Linney was really cool. Um, I said my fucking lines four million times, four million times, maybe five million times. And it was outside. I was so stank underneath that fucking caftan. It was so, I, I don't know why I chose to wear that, but it looked fine. It was just, you know, it's so funny. Like television, Movies, I had the tiniest little taste just to know kind of what the deal is. Mm -hmm. Not really, but you know what I mean. To get a sense. Ugh. It sucks. It's like, imagine like you're like going to acting school and you study all the greats and you like pour your heart out in these like school productions and you're like so passionate about cinema and blah, 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 blah. And then you get booked on a TV show or, or, or a film and it's the most boring, <laughs> tedious, <laughs> uncomfortable, in the moment unrewarding job you could ever imagine. Besides maybe like ice road trucking or something. But like it is, uh, yeah, it's like, it is a real like brrr. And then the, the product sometimes is so dazzling and amazing. It's yeah. like all worth it. But the, the day to day, oh. So you, you don't want to be the next Julia Roberts? No. Well, that's probably different because you're in every scene. But like, it is just, yeah, I mean, how about this though? We got a request, my, man my manager of a, an actor, a woman who's in SAG, who offered to be my stand-in. For what? I don't know. But she's often says that she gets her smile is just like mine and that she'd be honored to, like she's a big fan of it if I, they ever need a stand in. I don't get it. But I was like, yeah, send her to the next gig. Yes, yeah, send her to the next gig. And then you come at the last minute and you're ready to go. Uh, <laughs> it's so crazy. But yeah, no, anyways, not to sound ungrateful. I just love to say the opposite thing. That that was a nice experience. The actors are so incredibly sweet and so nice, like too nice. And um, you always wonder what's the scam and if they really like you. And uh it was just so, yeah, shooting stuff is like... It takes a lot. It's really not fun. Yeah. I don't know what is, like, what is your funnest job? If you had to think the funnest job you can imagine, what do you think it is? For you. Right now. Oh, come on. No, I'm serious. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I mean, this is like, we're not doing it over and over. We have to do this Yeah, exactly. It's just yeah. a conversation. Right. Yeah, it's, it's easy. It's interesting. Yeah, I, I, I get that. But you're not getting paid a ton of money for this. No. Okay, so it just, yeah. It's all a passion project. 
I'm trying to think like all the jobs I thought were really, really fun turned out to be not fun. <laughs> <laughs> I was like besides like doing what I actually do now like on stage but like you know acrobat for example yeah um I wanted to be an acrobat for like five good long years when I was young and I was like that was gonna be it that was it no questions and then I realized how in pain they were and how grueling the schedule is and how little they get paid and how short their careers are and how horrible life <laughs> it's like NBA cheerleaders except right yeah actually that's probably that's probably that's probably a good thing but they're so much more, they get so much more like dangerous than that, mm -hmm. you know? Oh God, it's awful. They have a saying, if an acrobat doesn't wake up in pain, it's because he didn't wake up. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible, terrible. Ugh. So another thing that happened this year was Vulture released the most powerful drag ranking. 13. And you right were number here. 13. However, a lot of fellow queens did not like the pictures, did not like the rankings, oh. did not want to be compared to other people. Well, that, I mean, you know, tough shit, honey. That's always going to happen. Like, you, and the NFL player, you know what I mean? Like, anything that is people are fans of, they're going to rank and compare and blah, 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 blah. But um, for, I had, I looked at those damn descriptions. They were evil. So funny. Like, because... It was ostensibly the list of the most powerful queens in the country, something we're being celebrated as, uh, you know, trash bags previously, and now we're, we're like wielding power. And then there was like a piss take on every description. It was so bad, or some of them were wrong. And like, I was just like, is this like, are y'all reading us or what? And so it was just so, it was so patronizing. So, some questions for you. Should I start crying now? Yeah, you should start crying now. What do you think the biggest misconception of Katya is? That I'm Russian. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that was the biggest misconception. I don't know. Um, um, oh, I'm not a slut. I'm not like a, well, maybe I, I no, I was, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't really know. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure what people, cause I am nice, like I'm, you know, um, I'm not like crazy. I don't know. Um, I actually am quite like dated. I'm, I'm quite boring. I'm not, um, although maybe that's changed. I, I, I uh, I'm not like wild or I'm like, I don't party or anything. I don't, I don't know. Like I'm, I think sometimes people expect me to be like crazy. What, you know, and I'm, I'm not really yeah. like kind of, I don't know. I'm old now, older. <laughs> so like, I don't know. I'm not really sure. I don't know. You know, uh, people always say, oh, you're really tall. You're like, yeah, I'm a duh, man. Duh. You know, but I'm not that, that tall. I don't know. I don't know. Are you truly happy? Um, at the moment? Yeah, I'm cool. I mean, I, like, I'm, it's different. Like, it, it's different. It's not like, um, I used to be, I've experienced lots of different kinds of happiness and joy and, like, excitement. And now I'm just like. Like I said, I'm just kind of like chill. Yeah. <laughs> Which is cool. I mean, it's nice. It's not like, but it's know. cool. I mean, yeah. you're, you're feeling good. Yeah. Feeling good, man. Feeling good, man. <laughs> Sound a little bit like Pearl right there. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so what is next for you? What do you have on the docket? I heard that you're doing a book. Yes. I'm doing a book. you have a lipstick. I've heard. Oh, well, there you go. You just, you just took all my, my. Oh, well, well go at it. Go at it. Go at it. Um, yeah, no, we just, I, we finished the first draft of the book, which is, is great. That was really difficult. And then, um, we did the, I think all the pictures are done, perhaps. The pictures are amazing. Oh my God, I can't wait to, I just want to show them to everybody. And then, um, yeah, I do like a lipstick collab, um, oh, oh. with, um, uh, with Tracy for her, um, cosmetics company called Red Scare. And, um, it's red. And, uh, uh, what else have I got? Mm. I get to go. I get to take a long break, which is cool. Um, I think I have like three months off. Oh, that's nice. It's just so wild. Like I never, I, I mean, it's so great. It's so good. So I think I'm just gonna gain like probably a hundred pounds. <laughs> Rebrand, it's a big fat fuck. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just like chill out and enjoy the sunshine in California. Enjoy it all. So closing everything down. Mm. What are some words of wisdom or words of encouragement that you can give to fellow LGBTQIA plus people? Sometimes it doesn't get better. I'm just kidding. Um, I, I, would, I would say wherever you go, there you are. 
<laughs> I know, I listened to Pearl, because I remember, I love that part of Pearl's interview where she says, I just, just, just fucking and run. <laughs> um, because wherever you go, do you take yourself with you? Um, but uh, I, I would say, um, oh, this for sure. Uh, we were just writing about, I was just writing about self-love. I, oh God, these nails are so great. I, uh, self-love and um, self-care. Mm -hmm. um, and this, was, this blew my mind when I heard it a while ago. Self-esteem is um, developed and maintained through the doing esteemable acts. Self-esteem is an action word. No, it's, it's about action. It's not about like, because I mean, think about it. Like, I, well, for me personally, the weather, uh, my opinion of myself <laughs> is the flimsiest like thing from day to day or minute to minute. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's been moments like, especially doing a show where I'm like, I am a fucking piece of shit. And then I'll go on stage and people are like, ah, and I'm like, oh, I'm the best. <laughs> and then, um, five minutes later I'm like not that good and then you know it just flimsy ephemeral always changing not fixed and but the 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 thing that you can do is like by like doing things that are good and that you know it's just it's what you do it's not how you think like who you are like how you think is like probably awful most likely and so um, it's just like those like actions um, allow you to um, have a better and more, um, you know, pr uh, have a realer kind of um, picture of yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, n I never thought that. I was like, oh, yeah. um, you know, it's hard to like, like yourself when you're a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and so like, you can get there just through like thinking, you know, um, or, you know, I was, uh, another thing was like, uh, with motivation, especially, um, if you wait for the moment that you want to do the dishes, they're never going to get done. Yeah. So you just got to do it, you know? Um, and that's the thing. I think a lot of times my advice for people is that often the best course of action is the opposite one of what you think. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, whatever you want to do is probably not the right thing to do. <laughs> um, and it, it, uh, one thing that is, I still resist to this day is like, uh, the one of the best ways for me to feel better is to help somebody else. <laughs> it's always true, though. But it's true. It does yeah, make you feel a little good. Always make and a problem shared is a problem cut in half. There you go. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for letting me expose you with your little baby hands right so there. Exposed. Yeah, my witch claws. Your witch claws. I'm Joseph Shepard. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe, to like, to comment, to go and follow Katya on everything, to go and follow me on everything. And this right here is. Katya, me, hi. hi. Hello, hi. Bye. Bye. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're such a good guy. You're very attractive, good for you. Oh, thank you.